Hello and welcome to the third complete waste of time in this silly series. Now this video is going to be quite a big one because in this video I'm going to be converting the car from its stock uh, brake and clutch pedal system to a much more modern marina pedal box system using a pair of hydraulic proper master cylinders and an entirely new pedal box arrangement with some new pedals uh, which hinge down from the top and mount to the bulkhead in the car. So that's going to be quite an extensive job so this is going to be a long video so um, if you are doing this modification yourself hopefully you find it helpful. Um, so strap in I guess. So here are the standard three pedals you get in a Morris Minor. Now the throttle pedal we're probably going to be keeping although it's almost certainly going to need some modifications, but we'll do that later in the video. However, the clutch and brake pedals are going to be changed. And not just modified, but they're going to be completely removed. The reason for that is this car is going to get a new engine, which is going to be more powerful than the original engine. So I would like to upgrade the brakes. Now, of course, you can get disc brake systems for the front wheels, which I do have, um, I do have one of those but that will be going on later. However, you then need really to upgrade the master cylinder in order to run those brakes properly. Now, as you may be aware, the Morris Miner's master cylinder is actually under the floor, basically under where the driver's feet goes, which is why the pedals hinge up from the floor to push it that way. And the clutch is a mechanical clutch. It directly pushes on the rod that moves the clutch in and out. Now, we're going to be changing these with two pedals that drop down from the top. And that's actually reasonably easy to do. All you need is one of these. This is the pedal box from a Morris Marina, the miner's infamous replacement. And you see it has a metal shaft here on which rides the clutch and then the brake pedal. It also has provision for the marina's throttle pedal, but I didn't have one, they didn't come with this pedal box when I bought it, so obviously I won't be able to use it. And also it doesn't really fit in the miner anyway, unless you extensively modify it. So if we turn it round, on the other side, we've got the clutch master here, which is just a little hydraulic um, generic clutch master. And then we've got the brake master cylinder and servo from a Mazda MX-5 Mark II. Now the reason I didn't use the original Marina um, clutch and brake, well, um, brake and servo rather, is because while it does fit, it's a bit old technology now and mine wasn't in very good condition. And you can buy new parts, it uses the same parts as the Triumph TR6 and they still make those new, but a pair, um, a new master and servo is about 140 quid or something. This cost me 35 quid second hand, all in. And if you are going to use one of these from an MX-5, make sure you get one from a car that has ABS. Because that way it only has two circuits coming out of the master cylinder. So you'd have two pipes here that would go to the ABS block in the Mazda. And that would then uh, go off from the ABS block to the both axles. If you get one from a car without ABS, the Mark 1 MX-5 uses the same system as well. Then it actually has three circuits, which is a bit of a pain in the ass to sort of tie together and use in the Morris Minor, so get an ABS one. To get the MX-5 servo to fit onto the pedal box, first thing I did was drill four holes in the back of the pedal box for the servo studs to come through, and you can put an M8 nut on those and that will hold it reasonably steady. But for extra security, I've welded a steel plate onto the back of the server, it's a bit hard to see there. But that then has holes spaced out to the correct pattern for the original four uh, servo holes in the pedal box. And then there are some bolts going through with obviously a nut on the end of those. So it's bolted on through the original four holes and then it will also have nuts holding it on with the original studs. So it will be very nice and secure there, which is important considering it's literally the brakes. Now, if you do want to do this conversion and you do manage to find yourself a marina pedal box, one thing you're almost certainly going to have to do is have the brake pedal and the clutch pedal altered because as they sit, they will interfere with the... Uh, well, the clutch pedal will interfere with the uh, steering column and it will sit too far to the right 
and the brake pedal will also interfere with the throttle pedal so they'll sit one on top of each other which is no good. So what you need to do with the clutch pedal is there is a big kink in it. I'll show a picture of the both the pedals as they sit in the car without alteration and there's a big kink in the um, clutch pedal and all you need to do is straighten it out as I've done here or had done rather because I got an engineer to do it properly for me in a vice because it's very thick steel although it isn't hardened so you could heat this up with a blowtorch if you had one which sadly I don't and as for the uh, brake pedal at this tipex mark here it bends that way so all you need to do is bend it the other way by about 110 degrees is what I mentioned uh, measured there originally so I've now got the pedals back and so I'm now going to bolt them back onto the master cylinder, or the, the pedal box rather, and see if they fit properly in the car. You'll also need to cut off and re-weld the pedal pads at the correct angle because they're now all skew with. So you've got two little plastic sleeves that slide in either end of each pedal. sort of hold this in position like that and then get the bar and sort of work it through. Now for the clutch pedal, it's a bit easier. Two plastic bushes yet again. One in that side, one in that side. Spring goes over like, nope, like that. Followed by the pedal and just lifts up and slots in like that. So here is how the Marina pedal box is going to fit onto the car itself. You need to buy this metal bracket. It's literally called the Marina pedal box and it's sold by ESM miners, I think it's about 40 quid, and it's this um, sort of half square bracket and it has a precision cut um, hole in the front of it with the correct number of bolt holes there for the marina pedal box to literally just bolt onto it. And then it slots in between the battery tray and the inner wheel arch on the car and you just sort of weld it in around. It does mean that you're going to have to cut a whacking great hole in the bulkhead, so, you know, that's the inside of the car. There's the steering column, there's the throttle. And it also means you're going to have to get rid of the elephant's trunk air intake if you've got a late moggy. Um, so if you want to keep that, then you're going to need to find another way to route it. Probably down the side there could work, or you could just do without it. You're also going to need to cut holes in your parcel shelf if you have one for the pedals to go through or you can just remove it completely like I've done. The pedal box is welded in only briefly. It's just tacked in a few places here, there and around the side there just for fitment purposes and I've also had to adjust it in a few places. I've had to cut it in this corner to make it clear and also cut it around here so it can fit around the foot for the engine steady bracket, so it will need some adjustment, but overall it's actually a pretty, uh, pretty good fit already, and the aperture for the pedal box is already the right shape and it all fits nicely, so what I'm going to do is just put the pedal box in, see how it fits. Okay, so here we are in the car and yeah, the pedals seem to be in 
pretty much the right position. The clutch pedal, that lines up pretty much perfectly with the original clutch pedal and doesn't, doesn't come anywhere near the steering column. So that's good. And the brake pedal falls pretty much again on top of the original the original brake pedal. However, they do sit a bit too far forward. You can see here it's about, you know, maybe three, three and a half, four inches of gap there between the pedal pad of the new brake and the old brake. Um, and that'll be the same as well with the clutch. The clutch is all the way down the moment because I've removed the uh, return spring. But um, So I'm going to have to probably alter the shape of the new uh, pedals as well as obviously removing the pedal pads and then welding them back on so they're sort of straight up and down like the originals but um, for now that's pretty good so before I remove the pedal box I need to consider how I'm going to further alter this area in order to make it fit properly I'm also going to need to shift basically all of the wiring so I'm going to cut out the hole that um, secures the wiring loom and then also the lower hole for the heater hose, that's not going to work either. Uh, the top one should just be about all right, but then I'm probably going to have to drill another one up here to sort of move the pair of hoses up a bit. And the wiring in general is going to have to be routed around this pedal box because, you know, it's not long enough really to go around it properly. But I've got another video planned all about the wiring, um, including lengthening it and getting around the pedal box and also getting rid of the old junction box and voltage regulator because now that I've got an alternator this is actually no longer needed. So with the bracket now removed I can start to work out what needs sort of cleaning up before it goes back on for the final weld. So I need to clean up this little shelf area here because it's got a bit rusty. And then I also need to start preparing across here. At the same time, I can probably also get around to sorting out this hole here in the bulkhead, which I've been covering up with a bit of dynamat. And what this was, there used to be an ignition coil which sat here, which actually had a device that went through back into the car. So that's why they mounted it up here and had to make this rather ugly hole. Um, and I've been meaning to get around to actually covering this up, but now's the perfect opportunity. So at some point I'll need to make a steel plate to cover the big hole and then the little holes in the corner, I'll just probably weld those up. I need to remove this old sort of fluffy factory sound deadening. It's not really needed anymore as I'm going to be replacing it with Dynamat at some point and right now it's little more than a fire hazard. While I'm doing that I'm actually going to remove the heater box which is one of the things on my cardboard list to do. That's the heater now removed and this will be subject to its own potential upgrades if not just a basic rebuild at some point. And now finally, with the heater gone, I can remove this ratty old sound deadening. Oh, much better. Now there's a lot less chance of me setting anything on fire when I'm grinding at this bulkhead. Okay, it's a new day, so the first thing I'm gonna do is start moving these holes upwards. So I'm gonna start with the wiring loom so what I've done here is I've drilled a hole in the metal there and then that's going to be used as a centering point for the 35mm hole saw which will then make a new big hole for the wiring loom. And the trouble is, is that to get the new wiring loom out of this hole and then through that one I can either cut the loom and then put it through the new hole and then splice it back together which I'm not really a fan of or I can disconnect it all from inside the car, pull it through and then push it back round, which again I don't really want to do. Or third option, I can cut a slot, which allows me to just to move the wiring loom up 
and then weld the metal back together and then I can just weld up this lower hole completely and I think that's what I'm going to do I've made this little disc of metal which I can now put in this hole and then hold, hold that in with a magnet and then weld around it and that will close that up nicely. Two more small discs to blank off the old heater hose, heater hose holes. Now the final big disc to close off that nasty hole there. So that's all the welding done for now. All nice and solid, especially up here. Got new metal filled in that ugly hole. So now I just need to grind back all of these welds and then I can actually start drilling the two new holes for the heater, hole, uh, for the heater hoses which go about there and there. I'm now going to recreate the two holes for the heater hoses and you can see I've drilled a pilot hole here for the uh, lower one. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't get a hole saw of about the right size. It was about 23, 24 mil, and um, I couldn't find a 25 mil hole saw that was in stock anywhere at short notice. But what I do have is this, which is a 20 mil massive drill bit. Uh, so I'm going to use this to widen the hole out and then finish it up as necessary with a round file. turned out particularly smoothly, has it? <laughs> Still, a bit of firing and that should come out nice and round. Okay, so now I'm going to start modifying the actual 
pedal box bracket and the first thing I'm going to do is drill three holes on the top here which will then have nuts welded to the underside to provide a thread so that then when the steel cover plate is made I can just put three bolts through in the front to uh, secure it to the pedal box bracket and there will also be some channels welded down the side here with an extra nut either side and then I'll sort something out along the back here. Okay, so I've built this little frame around the top and um, I decided it didn't actually need any nuts on the side so I've just got three along each end so when this is all done I can just make a steel plate with holes in it that can then just bolt to the top of there which I can then remove and that will allow me to get my hands in the top of this bracket if I need to ever sort of grab anything or do something. So with the pedal box bracket back in position, it can't sit flush against the bulkhead here and here because this strip that I've welded on is going across here. So I just need to mark this area at the back here with a sharpie and then round it back, which will then allow the top to sit fully flush. Okay, I've jumped ahead a little bit. I've done all grinding necessary and preparation on the bracket. And what I've done here is I've gone around with the Y brush wheel and cleaned up all the metal surfaces on the car and coated it with a weld through primer. So I'll be able to weld to this surface and once it's done then it should hopefully protect any areas I can't then get to with paint from getting rusty. I've also coated the bracket itself with the weld through primer. And I've also cut a couple of holes here, cut and drilled a couple of holes here for the choke and throttle cables. Note the choke and heater cables to go through um, nice and neatly rather than flapping about all over the place. So I'm just going to test this for fitment and then I'll tack it in place and then we can weld it in permanently. And there we go, it's done. I um, didn't film any of the subsequent painting of um, the bracket because I'm sure you can imagine what someone haphazardly spraying aerosols of paint all over the place looks like, but um, it was uh, 
all coated in the grey primer, the bare welds, and then after that had dried properly, then coated in a new layer of almond green paint, and then on top of that a layer of lacquer. And the layer of lacquer may be a bit overkill and it's probably gone a bit too shiny up here, but um, it will at least protect it all nicely. So that's now pretty much, I'd say, completely installed. The only subsequent bit of work I really need to do is um, maybe go in here and in here with some cavity wax and just sort of fill in any sort of new gaps and trenches that have been created to just keep the keep the rot out. Uh, but other than that, it's in. So I can now go in and actually probably, maybe, probably not for the final time, but I can do the first proper full install of the pedal box with all the bolts installed and then I can start working out piping for a new clutch mechanism which is going to run up here and then also I need to sort out the throttle pedal that's probably going to have to get removed and some extra fabricating done there okay so the pedal box is now bolted in nice and securely we've got the clutch uh, master cylinder in there and I've also put some just generic rubber edging around the around the edge of it just to make it fit a little bit nicer, look a bit more tidy. So now we're going to convert the clutch over to hydraulic. So I want to talk about the bits needed to do that. First of all, you're going to need clutch slave cylinder. This is off a uh, Mark II, I think, MG Midget slash Austin Healey Sprite. This is from the 1098 uh, 948 cars. Um, I don't think I don't know. A 1275 one may work, it's slightly different, but basically this is probably the one you want because it's the same gearbox as in a 1098 one. So you can buy these new. You're also going to need the rod that comes with it. Um, you need to buy that separately. And then you're going to need the clutch hose from a Mini, a Pre-Verto Mini. So I think that's most Minis like before 1989. Anyway, you'll need a clutch hose from one of those and that will fit in perfectly into the slave cylinder uh, you'll, with the copper washer as well and then you'll also obviously need the securing nut for the top of the clutch hose. Then you will also need the clutch fork from a midget or Sprite. This is from a 1275 midget but it should work and that just goes in and replaces the original clutch fork because it has a different fitting on the end here than the Morris Minor one, which it just has this sort of fork here with a bolt that goes through, which will allow it to attach to the end of that. So then that will work, and that will just bolt in in place and accept the original style uh, clutch release bush. Um, and then you'll also need a pair of bolts to. Um, bolt this onto the gearbox. These are 5 16th UNF I believe and the good thing is is because all the gearbox casings for this sort of range of BMC cars, the Sprites and Morris Miners and whatever, they all basically use the same casing so the good thing is is the two holes to attach the slave cylinder are already pre-drilled and tapped in the Morris Miner bell housing so you can literally just bolt this straight on, which is fantastic. Then, once it's bolted on, I'm going to need to make a bracket to attach this end of the clutch hose to the chassis, probably somewhere around here. I can weld that on. And then finally, I'll need to have made up a small copper brake hose with uh, 3 8 UNF fittings to go from the clutch hose up here and then screw into clutch master cylinder and then that will be it. That will be converted over to hydraulic clutch. You can see here now how the original clutch fork arm isn't suitable for this conversion because it uses this adjustable rod 
here which is pushed by the clutch pedal directly and it goes then through this hole here which usually has a bush in it but this one seems to have gone missing at some point so you can see compared to the midget fork it's a completely different end but they are the same length the bush the pivot bushing is in the same place and the fork is the same so this new part should work just fine there is a hydraulic clutch conversion you can buy that works with this original fork um, and I think it sort of taps into this rod system somehow uh, but this system is designed to work like this from the factory so this is the better conversion in my opinion it is worth noting however that if you use the midget fork with this rod then there is actually no adjustment on this system because this push rod here is a fixed length unlike the original one which can be adjusted um, however if you needed to adjust it what you could do is um, have one made up that has a threaded portion here that then you can thread in and out um, to move this this part here, the circle where the bolt goes through, you'd move that in and out so um, depending on how my clutch sits I might actually um, have that rod made up, it would be a very simple job to uh, swap it out anyway so I'll install this and then the slave cylinder Right, that's the slave cylinder installed and connected to the new fork, so that should go back and forth in the um, appropriate manner. Now what I need to do is I need to make a little bracket to fix this end of the uh, clutch flexible hose onto the chassis. So I'll probably do it around here somewhere, but I need to make sure the hose sticks clear of the chassis um, sort of down there so that it doesn't rub on anything because obviously the whole reason there's a flexible hose is because the gearbox is going to move left and right and up and down independently of the body of the car so it needs to sort of sit clear kind of like that so there's enough room for it to sort of expand and move. So I found this little off cut piece of steel which I've bent a 90 degree little tab on and what I'm going to do is drill a 15mm or so hole through here to allow the uh, clutch hose to pass through and then also drill a little hole in this tab which means I can then plug weld it directly to the chassis and that will sit like that and secure the pipe. So here's the little bracket I've made, and I think the best place to weld it is going to be about there. There we go, fits in perfectly and then the little nut will then fasten down over the outside and clamp it securely and there's plenty of clearance there between the gearbox and the hose and the chassis and the hose and it also leaves a bit of room for the gearbox to move up and down and for the hose to flex so I'm pretty happy with that and now that's in position I can now measure the distance between the hose and the inlet port on the clutch master and then once that's measured I can then order the correct length um, hard line to plug in and then once that's done I can actually fill up the mass cylinder with brake fluid and try and beat the system. So I've just coated it with a layer of red primer for now and then later I'll put some stone chip on it and then it'll be nicely protected. And in the meantime I'm going to start by getting the master cylinder fitted, the MX-5 master cylinder. And the issue is, is that 
it doesn't fit. You can see it won't really go in between the clutch master and the inner wing. It's just the servo is too wide. So I'm going to need to make some clearance. So just as I had to do on the other side with the wiper edge conversion, it's hammer time. Okay, I've made a bit of clearance down here with the hammer. Just just knock the um, inner wing in a bit and that's made a world of difference that now goes through it might need a little bit more but that's okay but now I'm running into the problem down here the bottom lip of the servo won't go over the um, little cap filler plug for this shock absorber so the only way to get around that is going to literally be remove the shock absorber which to be honest I need to do that anyway because I need to change the oil in the shock absorbers because I it's um, they're filled with some oil that's a lot thicker than it should be and the ride is too hard so I'm going to change it back to what it should be uh, and so once this has been removed which is very simple you just got four bolts here and then in there it attaches to the kingpin that this should just slide straight into position and bolt up as it's supposed to so with the driver's side front wheel removed I can now get to the kingpin at the top here, so to remove the shock absorber arm there's just this split pin here and then that nut gets removed and that then will allow the arm to sort of slide off that way and then I can undo the four bolts holding it onto the car. There we go. Needs a bit more persuasion, I think, to seat it fully, but that will go in. That now fits. Okay, that's now fully seated and bolted in. I had to give the car a few more love taps down here with the hammer to get it to fit fully, but yeah, that's now properly fixed in. But then I have noticed that there is another thing I need to check, which is whether or not this crossbar on the bonnet, let me just get the bonnet to close, there we go. This bar will clear the reservoir. No, it doesn't. That's annoying. Shouldn't be too much of a problem though. Just need to um, work out where it hits and then cut a small section out and that'll be fine. I'm not actually going to have this plumbed in though at first, I'm just going to have it sort of fitted in and I'm going to be driving the car to brake in the engine using the original brakes, original master cylinder and the reason for that is down to this. To get the servo to work you need a vacuum feed. Now I'm going to be braking in the engine using the original carburetor and exhaust and the inlet, inlet manifold doesn't have a vacuum takeoff so I can't run the brake servo using the original uh, inlet manifold. So I'm going to have to run the original non-assisted drum brakes to bed the engine in. Then when I upgrade to the twin carburetors after the engine's been broken in those do have a vacuum takeoff to power the servo so then I'll be able to plumb this in, get it working and then also change the front brakes to the disc brakes at the same time but that's far in the future now. So now inside the car you can now see the problem with the throttle pedal so if I grab the throttle pedal and try and lift it up see it fouls on the crossbar for the new pedals so I've taken the pedal box off the car again and taken it apart to get the pedals off because I'm now going to strip these down 
put a by brush wheel and uh, not only give them a nice new coat of paint but also remove the pedal pads and re-weld them on so that they are at the correct angle. Okay, so here's the pedals. Now with the pads re-welded on, they're now in line with the tops again. So now just degrease them and paint. Okay, so here are the pedals, all nicely painted up. They are coated in a layer of red oxide primer and then some black um, hammerite stone chip. So they look rather nice and they should be nice and durable. Shouldn't wear off if feet happen to rub over them and I've also put a pair of nice new pedal rubbers on the pads uh, which you can still buy relatively cheaply uh, because the one on the clutch pedal was missing completely and the one on the brake pedal was severely worn out so they now look pretty much new. So I'm going to now reassemble the clutch pedal only onto the pedal box because uh, again we won't be using the, the uh, brake pedal with the master master cylinder for first few run-ins of the engine so I'm just going to put the clutch back on. I will put the master cylinder on though just to block off the hole and also test the fitment with the um, uh, front shock absorber. Okay so it's in and there we have it. We've got a nice clutch pedal and then I'll brake and throttle and talking of the throttle I now need to probably turn my attention to that throttle pedal and sort out the rod there. Now before I said I was going to um, shorten or lengthen it but I think actually what the might, more efficient thing to do might actually be to lengthen that shaft there so that the upright portion is moved across so it operates on this side of the clutch pedal and it should just about fit in a gap there. I might have to open up some bit more metal but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So here's the throttle pedal removed from the car, it's just two bolts, I think there are 7 16 bolts that go through there, those two little brackets, and then what I've done is I've marked it here with a line going across so that I can keep the uh, alignment correct when I weld the extension on, and then also I'm going to cut it just, if it'll focus, I'm going to cut it just after that shiny portion and use I think about five centimeters of this 10 mil round stock just to extend it across. Okay, so after the initial modifications, the pedal has been reinstalled and it's just about right, only it sort of it contacts the side of the, uh, the metal right here, so a little bit of filing is going to be needed and then also up here it hits there, so I just need to clearance it a little bit, but then that should be more or less perfect. Right, so I've been at work doing a few things. First thing I've done is actually paint 
the rest of the engine bay properly. So while the um, shock absorber is off, I stripped it all down here. I removed the uh, washer bottle bracket and the horn and I've painted all this in a nice new shade of almond green and then also I've lacquered it as well. And I've also gone around after the lacquer dried with some cavity wax and I've put it in some of the seams around here where I had to clean stuff off and under there as well where I had to clean stuff off and degrease things as well. I've also put some inside the new pedal box bracket. It's um, a bit messy but it's nice and sticky and it goes everywhere. It's the built hamber cavity wax which I've been using for a little while and I think it's really good actually. It's, it's like wax oil except it's not shit. I have made my modifications to the side of here and I've reinstalled the pedal and that now clears perfectly. I've also reinstalled the throttle pedal and given it a nice coat of black stone chip so it will match the new clutch and brake pedals. Um, now I don't have a throttle cable yet for this. I can't really use the original throttle cable because the original throttle cable mounted somewhere around here um, directly to the bulkhead and then went through and connected to the throttle pedal um, spur so that's not going to work. What I've done is I've bought another universal cable and what I'm going to do is drill probably another hole about here for it to mount and then that will extend out backwards and connect to the throttle pedal about sort of there and then that will simply come out here and connect round to the carburetor when the engine's in so that should work nicely. So now that the uh, throttle pedal's sorted, I can get on with actually installing again the pedal box and then sort out plumbing the clutch system in. Okay, so I've got the pedal box reinstalled again and without the shock absorber, it's a really nice tight fit. So I'll refit the shock absorber at some point and see if there's enough clearance for it. Um, if not, then I'll have to make some adjustments to the shock absorber, but that shouldn't be a problem. But for now, I want to get on with the clutch. So now I can put my clutch hose through the little bracket that I made and then there's the locked washer and then a big nut that goes over the top there and then I've had made a little Cooper nickel pipe just to slot down there and go between the clutch pipe and the Clutch master cylinder, that should fit reasonably well. Okay, with everything now plumbed in, I can finally fill up the master cylinder for the first time. Now I'm just going to pump the pedal, try and get some of that fluid down there. Well, obviously feeling no pressure on the pedal at all, but the mechanism all seems to be moving nicely, so I just sort of just keep at it. Okay, that system is now bled. Um, couldn't really show you much of it, um, it was just me pushing the pedal. I haven't actually had to touched the uh, bleed nipple once, I haven't undone it. I've literally just pushed the pedal, I started using my hand just to go it, get it going back and forth really fast and uh, by pumping it hard enough I was, <laughs> I was able to basically force all the air from the bottom to the top and just keep topping up some brake fluid because the piping on this system is so short it literally just goes right down there so it's basically fully bled, um, just bled the air out the top. I may need to make that adjustable little push rod that goes on the clutch lathe that I was talking about earlier in the video. Um, but it's going to be hard to tell when, until an engine's back in the car about how the clutch feels or where the biting point is. Uh, but it should all be fairly adjustable. Um, but yeah, the system is working perfectly. It moves back and forth, there's no leaks. And yeah. So there we have it, that's the pedal box pretty much completely installed. Obviously I'm not going to be plumbing in these brakes at the moment, but you know, 
that's um, fairly simple to do, just make a couple of extra pipes and get it all sorted out. Um, but yeah, that's the mount installed and all welded in and painted. Um, pedal box installed with my own little custom mods to add the Mazda MX-5 uh, master cylinder and servo. You can use the original Marina items as well, which will fit better, but you know, they're a bit rubbish. Um, but yeah, that pretty much concludes my install of the pedal box. That's how you do it. Well, this seems like a fairly good place to call the video, so I hope you've enjoyed it. It was quite a long one, but there was quite a lot of detail I wanted to get in there, so I did think it should you know, include as much relevant details as possible. Um, hopefully, if you are trying to do this mod on your own Moggy, then you found it you know, helpful. Um, other than that, you know, hope hope you've enjoyed um, wasting most of an hour watching it, and you know it's helped you stave off the terrible existential pain of being a human being. In the next video, I'm going to be tackling this mess. I'm going to be doing the electrics, which is going to involve the installation of a modern modular fuse box um, and the elimination of the voltage regulator. So I hope. If you found this interesting, you'll join me next time, and we'll see how we get on with doing the electrics. See you all.